morning, church family. Ladies, I invite you to join our women's choir, a vibrant community of voices coming together in harmony. Whether you're an experienced singer or just starting out, there's a place for you here. We celebrate the power of women's voices and the joy of making music together. Join us as we lift our voices and share in the camaraderie of creating beautiful music. Come and be a part of something special. Join our women's choir today. Hello, church family. My name is Minister Eloise Robinson, and I am the ministry leader of our Noonday Bible Study here at Antioch. We meet every Wednesday at 12 o'clock p.m. in the chapel for Bible study and fellowship, and we encourage you to come and join us. We look forward to studying the Bible with you. I greet you in the strong name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Reverend Albert Shagwar, co coordinator for the prison ministry here at Antioch. If you're looking for an opportunity to share your God-given gifts, the prison ministry is the ministry you can get plugged into. Our mission is to fulfill the Great Commission and the Great Commandment. By doing this, we share the gospel to the men and women behind the prison walls here locally and also in Dayton, Texas. Our prayer and heart desire is that God grant them life-changing experiences that they may turn their hearts from crime to Christ. If you need more information concerning the prison ministry, you can contact me at prison at antiochbmt.org or you can call me at 409-201-1216. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Thank you. Hello, church family. My name is Deacon Arthur Lewis, and I belong to the mighty men of Antioch. If you are a man, this is the perfect ministry for you to join. Not only do you have the chance to praise God with other strong men, but you also have the opportunity to fellowship with other believers in Christ. I look forward to seeing you sing with us next time. If you are interested in joining, please email exalting at antiochbmt.org. And don't forget, we are the mighty men of Antioch. Hello, church family. My name is Major Goldman, and I am your director of music here at the Antioch Church. Psalms 95 and 1 says, Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. You do not have to be a soloist, but if you have a passion for singing, we would love to have you join one of our many choirs. Here at Antioch, we have a choir just for you, for all ages and styles. For example, we have seven choirs for you to become an active servant. We have our children, youth, young adult, men, women, Voices of Antioch, and the hymn choir. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me or Marie Sanders for further information. Remember, we are better together. Hello, church family. My name is Felicia Young. I am the coordinator for Global Missions Ministries here at Antioch. Our mission is to fulfill God's three core values, the Great Commission, the Great Commandment, and the Great Calling. And we're doing it on a global scale. Presently, we are actively involved and engaged in communities in Africa, we're in Haiti, Belize, the Bahamas, as well as various locations across the United States. So if you have a passion for making a difference in people's lives and you wanna do so worldwide, you might wanna get involved with this ministry. So feel free to reach out to me through the church office or via email at feliciay at antiochbmt.org. Have a great day. Good morning, church family. Thank you so much for joining us today. Before service begins, here are a few rules of the house. Rule number one, prepare to rejoice. The Bible tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rule number two, prepare to receive. This is your place of blessings. And rule number three, prepare to be restored. Healing happens every time we gather in the presence of our God. We are now approaching the top of the hour and it's time to do what we do best. Make sure you stay until the end of service for news you can use. It's now time for devotion. Will you join me in standing all over the building and helping me celebrate 
the beginning of our Palm Sunday worship today. Uh, give the Lord a big hand clap of praise and honor, glory and gratitude. Wait, if you have nothing to be thankful for, y'all can hold your peace. But if you know God's been good to you, help me celebrate Jesus Christ in a wonderful way. Come on, man. Give the Lord a big hand clap. If you have a Bible, grab it. I want to call your attention to a hymn we've been reading every single Sunday since January. And I think that redundancy brings clarity and repetition brings redemption. So hear it again, Psalms 100, if you have your Bible. Uh, if you got Facebook in your Bible, you ought to have his book in your phone too. If you got Facebook in your phone, you ought to have a Bible in your phone. If you got TikTok, you ought to have a Bible in your phone. You ought to have a Bible app that says, this is the app I use to read my Bible with. And so that way you can't ever lose it. You know, folk will lose a Bible, but they ain't going to never lose a phone. They're going to keep that joke. So go ahead, open up your phone. If you got a Bible, you can scroll. That's cool. I'm good with that. I want you to go to Psalms 100. And I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. If you got it, say, I'm there. Uh, okay, I see, see people scrolling. That's a good sign. Let me just give you a couple of things that I zone my heart right quick. This is the day that the Lord has made. You know what you ought to do? Yeah, hold on. Talk to me if you can. Rejoice and be glad in it. Can I tell you why? Great is the Lord. And greatly is he to be praised that our God is an awesome God, that he reigns, Deacon Johnny Roberts, not from beneath, but from above, that he speaks and men who are healthy lay down and die. He speaks and men who are sick who should die keep on living. Amen. Here is how the hymn reads in Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Oh, ye. is that what your Bible reads? Then y'all read it with me so I don't have to read by myself. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his sheep. Enter into his gates with, and enter his courts with praise, be, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, and his truth endures. Amen. Will you put those Bibles down and help me do exactly this? Make, create a joyful noise. Y'all do that right now. Just make a joyful noise. Yeah. You ought to do it just because you can. I tell people all the time that folk come here to see what God is like and none of us are God, but you ought to have enough of him in you to show somebody what he's like. So hold on y'all right quick. I just want you to touch two people and tell them God has been good to me and I know it. Y'all find two people to tell them God's been good to me and I, you, you don't even know their name. Just tell them he's been good to me. And I know it. I ain't got to ask you. And I know it. We begin every service with prayer. And we believe that if we touch and agree that the Bible says God is with us. Jesus taught his disciples, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there will I be in the midst of them. So if you would, take a moment, circle off two, three, no more than five in your group. And if you're with your family, that's really beautiful. Just circle off with your family. But if you have friends here, if you don't know the people, just find a new hand to grab and just make a small circle, a complete small circle. You may have to move to make that happen, but it's cool. Move, shift, find a nice space. And now if you're in a circle, I love these circles. I'm loving it. And if you're in a circle with some folk you don't really know, 
Tell them good morning. How y'all doing? All of that, all of that, all of that. Tell them good morning. Glad to see you. Happy to be near you. You do not know what the hand you've been through has been through the week past. You don't know what demons they've seen. If you're holding your, if you're holding your child's hand, you don't know what demons your child has seen. Children don't tell their parents everything. You didn't tell your mom and dad everything. But here's what you know. God saw them through this week. So I want you to pray that God would bless them and favor them. That he would keep them and guide them. You ready? Y'all ready? When I get to the name Jesus, begin to pray. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost, the name of Jesus, begin to pray for your neighbor. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Pray for them. Pray for them. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul. Yes, Lord, oh, completely, yes, my soul says yes, oh, yes, Lord, my soul says yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart. To the depths of my soul, yes, Lord, oh, completely, yes, my soul says, oh, yes, Lord, hallelujah, yes, Lord. From the bottom, from the bottom of my heart To the depths of my soul Yes, Lord, I'm completely yes. My soul says, yeah, oh Yes, Lord Hallelujah. Ah, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. From the bottom of my heart to the depths. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, completely. You can release your neighbor's hand, lift those hands. And praise and sing it. Oh, come on, sing it, church. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. From the bottom, from the bottom up to the depths of my soul, to the depths. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come. I don't know how you love on God. I don't know what you do, whether you clap, stand still, be silent, lift your hands. I don't know what you do. But for the next 15 seconds, I just want you to tell God how much you love him, how much you care, and how thankful you are. You ready? Spend your moment. It's your moment. Just tell God whatever you're going to tell him. Let him know you can't make it without him. Bless him, thank him, adore him, magnify, exalt him. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, you Lord. Thank you. You ought to lift your hands and sing it. Thank, 
thank you. You can let worship present. Ah, uh, I just want to thank. If he's been good to you, you ought to lift both hands and tell him you've been so, so good. If it's true, you ought to help me sing it. You've been. Hallelujah, you've been so, so good. Hallelujah, I just want to thank. And for some of y'all, you can sing this. And you made a... Yeah, that's true for some of y'all. I can feel that. You made Away at your place, oh, you made a way. I just want to come on, lift your hands, Zion. Come on, help me sing it, sing it, pain. From the depths of my soul. Come on, sing it. Sing. Ah, sing it, pain. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank. I just want with everything in me. Want to thank you, Lord. If you're grateful, give the Lord a big hand clap right where you are, right where you are, right where you are. Well, we're a church with a vision, it lives in the hearts of the people. We use it because it's our mantra for ministry. Media team, put that vision statement up there. Help us celebrate it by sharing it with us today. Antioch Missionary Baptist Church is a Christ-centered, biblically-based, spiritually-led church that meets the needs of the total person by exalting the Savior, evangelizing the sinner, equipping the saved, edifying the saints, and encouraging every soul through administrative excellence by the power of the Holy Spirit in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's Palm Sunday. Y'all give the Lord another big hand clap of praise today. If you've got a poem when you walked in, you ought to wave them. It is our celebration of saying he is not just some ordinary man. He is my king. I'm a citizen of his country. And he shall reign forever and forever and forever. Let the church say amen. We're ready to begin our worship celebration to Jesus Christ. Our men of Antioch are leading us. Give them another big hand clap as they come to help us in their own way. Good morning, Antioch. No, no. Good morning, Antioch. I don't know what you come to do, but we come to do one thing. It's praise his holy name. And to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Because we are the mighty men of Antioch. Come on and put those hands together. If you know there's power in the name of Jesus... There is power, so much power. There's power, power in the name. Oh, power, so much power. There's power in. Oh, there is power.
want to be healed. My body's all filled with sores. He said, Lord, I want to live. Jesus reached out and touched me. All the sores went away. Just like he did for that man that changed him. Take your sickness away because there's power. So much Brought you through. You understand and shout to the world and say, I am a witness too. You want to clap your hands and tell them I have no doubt. Through all of my struggles and trials, it was Jesus who brought me out. Cause there's power, so much. There's power in the name. I want to be healed. My body's all filled with sores. He said, Lord, I, I want to be healed. Jesus reached out and touched him. And all the sores went away. And just like he healed that man that day, he'll take your sickness away. Because there's power. Help me sing so much. There's power. Let's check it out. What to do? 
Jesus, he will fix him. I tried him and I know him. I tried him and I know him. When my enemies come near me, God will lift up a standard. He'll lift up a standard. some of you in this cathedral you haven't lived long enough to see Jesus really fix some stuff for you. So you've never seen him fix your health because you ain't never been sick. You've never seen him pay a bill because somebody else already paying your bills for you. You've never seen him fix a problem on your job. You've never seen him fix some stuff in your heart that your heart has bad. 
Well, there's some of y'all sitting here. You've seen what the Lord can do. Don't you fool me today. You've been sick and you got well. You've been between a rock and a hard place and he fixed it. Where are all the folk who can say, I know what God can do? You ought to just lean over and tell somebody, I don't look like my testimony does. But I can tell you, can't nobody fix it like Jesus Christ can. Y'all ought to just give the Lord, I know he can fix it, pray. Just help me thank God for who he is, for what he's done, and for how he does it. A few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, Dr. Bransford, a few weeks ago, I had a young lady who had to go to court, uh, 28 years old, had a rough start, but on a new track. You ever been there where you had a rough start, but you're doing stuff right? She on a new track. She went to court. She was so worried, Tanya said, Pastor Adolph, I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, I do. You're going to show up on time. You're going to dress neat, and you're going to watch God work it out. She texted me. She said, he fixed it. I said, I know you right I need for somebody in here who can say, I'm on a new track. I ain't always been that, yet, but, but I'm on a new track. I've seen the Lord fix some stuff for me that I know I could straighten out. If you ain't heard nothing else, he can, he will, he shall fix it. Oh, bless his name. Amen. And amen. Come on, give the Lord a big praise right where you are, right where you are, right where you are, right where you are. We want to pause long enough to say welcome to our friends, visitors, and guests. Uh, and I want you all to know this. I shared this with the 8 o'clock crowd, 8 o'clock congregation. And I told them, I spy on my friends sometimes during the week to see what my buddies are doing around the country. Just from coast to coast, I've been blessed with so many marvelous friends who are pastors of mega churches around the country. And I spy on them, see what they're doing. And you know what I found that's unique about Antioch? We pause and tell the online web-based congregation, we're glad that you're here. If nobody else is thankful of your online presence, we are. Hey, Antioch 3920, give those who are watching from around the world a huge hand clap of welcome. Hey, media team, put those emojis all over the screen. Just put them up all over the screen. Just let them know we are grateful for y'all. And if you're an e-member, type the word welcome, hit enter. That's our way of saying to you that we're welcoming you to this congregation and we're grateful for you. But hold on, we have visitors in the house as well. If you are not a member of the Antioch Church and you are a first-time guest, will you stand at your feet right quick, right quick, all over the building, first-time guest? Wow! Hey, y'all, give our first-time guests a big hand clap of, of love right quick, a hand clap of love. In fact, Deacon and Sister Miles, well, y'all, is this Deacon and Sister, hold on, y'all. Y'all give my friends Deacon and Deaconess Miles, man, from, uh, from Galilee Baptist Church in Shreveport. Y'all give them a big hand clap of love. So glad to have them. And then I love my collegiate group, man. We call them the Relentless LU Crew. They make up a core and crux of our student populace that's matriculating on the campus of Lamar. Man, if you are a part of Lamar University, y'all stand up right quick and y'all help me love on these college age young folk, both on the floor and in the balcony. Remain standing. And then if you are a returning guest, y'all stand up too. Returning guest, been here before, came back to visit again. Trey and Ebony, that is not your children. Oh, my God. That's not the kids, is it? Please don't tell me. Y'all give them a hand clap, y'all. I married them years ago. They was, I'm coming to hug y'all. Hold on. Okay, wait. And then wait a minute. We honor our elders at Antioch. It doesn't have to be Black History Month for us. We stand upon the shoulders of those whose sacrifices are real for us to enjoy. 
And if you are 70 years old and older and you're in our midst, would you stand to your feet if you feel like it so we can just honor your presence today? Hold on, y'all not clapping. I think you should do that. 70 and older, you stand. It's because of you we enjoy the freedoms that we have. And if you are a member of the Antioch Church, stand to your feet. That means everybody ought to be on their feet by now. Visitors, guests, returning guests, first-time guests, LU crew, all of that. People come here to see what God is like. That's why they come. They pass by. You're the largest church between Beaumont and Baton Rouge and Houston and Baton Rouge. And they stop. They say, I want to see what this God is like that they in there worshiping. And none of us are God. But if you love God, you can show people what God is like. How many of y'all just love God? With every flaw you got, all your stuff. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to help me show people what God is like by simply grabbing somebody's hand and just telling them, God bless you. It's so good to see you. If you came up with just tell them, he can fix it like nobody else can. Just find some hands and touch some people. You ready? Make that happen.
the people of God who love the Lord said together, Amen. Standing to your feet for the reading of God's word. Luke 19. So I want you to be an educated Christian. I want you to know what you believe. Because if you don't know what you believe, you'll learn to believe anything. It makes no sense to have the truth and go looking for it. So here's the truth. There is no religion on the face of the globe who will boast that their God became one of us to save the world around us. Hindus, Buddhists, Yahwists, Taoists, uh, Muslims, it doesn't matter. Only Christians believe that God became one of us to pay a price that he did not owe because we have a debt that we cannot pay. Do you understand that? We are the only system of belief. Don't start that clock. Thank you all so much. Don't start it yet. Hold on. This is my preface today. Wait. We are the only ones who believe that a sinner is safe in the hands of God. One who would ask God to forgive them. One who could look at their own lives and say, hmm, I'm not quite what I need to be. Anybody been there lately? Well, you just kind of look at yourself and say, you know, now wait a minute, I ain't what I used to be. But I'm not what I need to become yet. And yet, listen, God has never changed his mind about me. He's never given up on me. In fact, he's not even gotten sick of me. Did you hear what I just said? In the book of Luke, Dr. Pat Bransford, it appears 13 times that Jesus is headed for Jerusalem. Everybody say Jerusalem. So like uh, Angela, a crimson cord through a beautiful white quilt, the book of Luke says redundantly and repetitively, he's on his way to Jerusalem. He set his face to Jerusalem. And by the time we get to Luke 19, guess where he's headed? to Jerusalem. What are you going to do when he get there? To die for the sins of the world. We've been in this book that's entitled Based on a True Story. We started in Christmas, December the 1st, and I told you we would take a 122-day journey. Next Sunday will be Easter Sunday. It'll be day 122. Today is Palm Sunday. Everybody say Palm Sunday. On this day, Dr. Nelson, he called for a donkey and rode it through the city, and the people shouted and rejoiced. But while he's on the way, there is an episode, a story, a Netflix sequel, a Hulu film that takes place of this dude named Zacchaeus. Everybody say Zacchaeus. He was from the hood. We call him Zaki. Everybody say Zak. Say Zak. I want you to learn his story because all of us are like Zacchaeus. Everybody say Zacchaeus. Lord, help me teach this in a way that a child could understand it. Get profound enough that a sinner would want to become a saint. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Luke 19. You ready? And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. You see that? Okay, pop quiz. Where is Jesus going right now? Woo, I'm about to buy everybody lunch. Say it again. Say it, say it again. Where are you going? Jerusalem. Yeah, that's where he headed. But he's going through what city right now? Come on, talk to me, Anna, y'all. Come on. And behold, there was a man named, I just told you his name. What's his name? which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. 
and he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press because he was little of statue. Everybody say he was short. Mm-hmm. So here's what he did, verse 4. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, hurry up, and come down out that tree you didn't got yourself into, for today I must reside at thy house. And he made haste and come down and received him joyfully. And when they, the religious people, saw it, they murmured, saying that he was, do you see that? Some gone to be some guest with a man that is a sinner like this? By the way, can I just throw this in? This Jesus is not going to be one everybody likes. Because Jesus, if he was here today, would hang out with a tatted crowd, with gold teeth, a little weed on their breath. See, this is going to bother some of you religious people. Because this is not the Jesus we really talk about. He could have hung out with others from the temple. He didn't. He picks a common hoodlum named Zacchaeus. He says, I'm going to come hang out with you. And it bothers the religious people. And they say, what? You're going to hang out with him? Watch this. Verse 8. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man, false accusation, I restore it fourfold. He says, Lord, I know I'm messed up. I ain't going to even lie. I'm guilty of it, so just, you know, be patient with me. And Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation, Yahweh. Come into this house for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. Do you see that? Now watch this last verse. Please get this. This is the core content and the center of all of it. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. Say amen for the reading. Grab a neighbor by the hand and just say, neighbor, I'm glad to be in church this Sunday. Tell them I'm supposed to be here. The preacher needs your prayers. All of your amens. Today's sermon subject, we've come up short. You just tell somebody, we've come up short. We've come up short. The grass withers, the flower thereof fades. The word of our God shall last and stand forever. Ushers, you may retire. You've been the best ushers in the whole wide world. People are complaining about cool weather in southeast Texas. A lady recently called in to a KFDM Channel 6 and asked the meteorologist, when was the hot weather coming? I said to myself, if you don't be quiet and hush your mouth, apparently you are not from here. Hot weather in southeast Texas can kill a tree. It can become so hot, Virginia Crook, that grass will give up the ghost. Shrubbery will lean over and die. A swimming pool that was full of water will need a bath. It's so hot in southeast Texas, ladies and gentlemen, that you can make sun-brewed tea on your porch. You can bake cornbread in your mailbox. A lady over there docking cheek, listen to me, you got to be in the country to see this. She took a felt black piece of quilt, put it over her mailbox, stuck some foil in the mailbox and a pound cake and cooked cake in her mailbox. It took five hours, but she still made it. It can be hell made manifest. 
The devil can walk around in the summer and be comfortable here. It's hot. I was at Central Park one summer recently, and it was one of those heated days where nothing could move but children who had no sense. They were running around, playing, having a good time, and one of the parents thought enough of them, Lisa, to make sure she bought in tubs of ice and syrup to make snow cones. They stopped to serve these snow cones, and those lines got long, all wrapped around the basketball court, up the bench, nearby to the building. Children who wasn't even in her group got in line. You know, we next to. And initially, they were fixing big old snow cones, just one my size, you know. But all of a sudden, as I quickly noticed, that ice started running out, running out. They start fixing skimpy snow cones. You don't even get a school. You get a spoonful, you know, a lot of syrup and no ice, you feel me? But finally, after it got about halfway through, she had to make this horrible, horrid announcement that sounded like this. I'm so sorry, but we've come up short. As I stood there in a shaded area, drinking a nice cool bottle of Dasani water, it hit me. That announcement is an announcement that everybody on the planet has to make at some point in time. And it goes like this. Excuse me, I'm sorry, but I've come up short. When you look at presidents who've led this country, each of them during their administration have come up short. Nixon came up short with Watergate. Clinton came up short with Monica Lewinsky. Barack Obama came up short with Obamacare. We look around us and see presidents who've missed it. Donald Trump is coming up short right now. 464 million and counting. Touch your neighbor and say, I'll be short right now myself. Hey, brothers and sisters, he has come up short. Biden has come up short on moral policy. And no matter what you say, the Bush administration came up short with economic resolve because in 207, we watch Wall Street beg for mercy. Brothers and sisters, not only do politicians come up short, athletes come up short. Mike Tyson, Iron Mike Tyson, who is now 57 years old, who's about to come out of retirement. Can I just throw this in? At 57, I ain't got time for you to be hitting on me no more. I'm trying to survive at 57. He's coming out of retirement. Why? Came up short on finances. Came up short against James Buster Douglas and the Cowboys when they faced off against the Lions in Reliance Stadium. How in the world you gonna come up short against Detroit in your own backyard? And what can we say ladies and gentlemen about the 49ers against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl? Whether you were for Patrick Mahomes or not. Andy Reid pulled one off at the last minute with nerves of steel. The clock got 30 seconds on it. Ushered and come and gone and then done his thing. I'm looking for overtime and what happens? He waits, snaps the ball with three seconds left, throws his pass in the flat and sends the 49ers back to San Francisco to put a train on the track. Why? They came up short. Ladies and gentlemen, be careful who you put on a pedestal because what you will soon discover is they come up short. Hold on, watch this. Not only do people come up short and presidents, athletes come up short, actors come up short. Every time I read a new article about Will and Jada Pinkett Smith, my heart just says, with all of that money, you need help from God because there's some stuff money can't buy, credit can't charge, and a check won't write. And on a good day, you're going to keep coming up short. Pastors come up short. Hello, my check, my check. Pastors come up short. 
mic check, mic check. I said, pastors come up short. So quit telling people your pastor is Jesus. That's a lie. I told you on the third, is this the third, what Sunday is it? The fourth Sunday of March. Other day, somebody came up to me in the barbershop, Dre. What we gonna do with Bishop T.D. Jakes and Puffy Comb? You know what I told them? Number one, you don't know if that's true. But if he did do it, he's short like the rest of us. At the end of the day, people packed in pews and churches come up short every day. We come up short on forgiveness, end up in hatred, come up short, tell me I'm gonna lose 30 pounds in two days and gain 15 and five. I need somebody in here who knows what it's like to come up short. Hey, brothers and sisters, we are faced with a human dilemma and it affects all of us in here at our very best on the best day we could ever live we come up short it's the story in the bible that people pass by without ever preaching it and I gotta stop and say the day is our day his name is Zacchaeus he is a short tax collector who is a common thug in a criminal system of Rome. Here is what he does. He steals money from people who work hard every day and the government supports him. Zacchaeus stands at the corner and when you come into the city this little short dude, I guess about 4 feet, 11 inches tall bad attitude just can stop you and say I'm collecting taxes for the government. You only owe a dollar fifty but today I'm going to charge you eleven fifty, and you can't get in unless you pay the tax. He just filthy rich, bawling and shot calling. If Zacchaeus could live in our day, he would have a grill, he would have tats up his neck, a couple on his face, and a little liquor on his breath. And Jesus is coming his way. Can I throw this in right quick? God knows where you are located, no matter what condition you are in. And he is going Zacchaeus' way. Zacchae runs ahead, climbs up into a tree to see Jesus. Why? Because he's short. Touch your neck and say Zacchaeus is short but he wants to see Jesus so he climbs up into a tree and Jesus gets on the tree and says Zac come down I'm finna go hang out with you the religious people say oh my God you mean to tell me you're gonna hang out with this weed smoking grill wearing tattoo packing person and Jesus says yep he's just my kind I didn't come for those who think they have it together I came for those who are broken and know they need my help I am a physician I'm not here for those who think they have it all together I have come to get those who are sick I come to seek and to save that which is lost why preach this on Palm Sunday because ladies and gentlemen all of us have the same problem Zacchaeus has we come up short I get sick and tired of people in here who point a finger at other people's problems when you want to dress your own stuff. At the end of the day, if you just sweep around your own front door, you will discover you got enough garbage to fill every hefty bag you will ever need. I get sick of people out there who talk about that's why I don't go to church. Ain't none of them right. Yes! That's the whole idea. It's a hospital for sick people and the reason you need to be in here is because you short like the rest of us. It's why I pick deacons like I do. I pick men who are short all the time. I pick people I want to hang out with who walk with a limp sometimes because they don't have it all together. I get sick of pretentious churches who paint this facade that says none of us are short when all of y'all limp and everybody's short. I get so tired of us mixing up maturity with perfection. Just because that's where you were when you started does not mean you ought to stay there. Read translation. If you weighed 400 pounds last year and you went to the gym and you still at 400 pounds, you should leave that gym and fire your trainer. At some point, you ought to show some sign of progress. But progress is not perfection. Who am I talking to? I want to preach to some people who thank God that he didn't change his mind when you came up short. Where y'all? 
Hold on. If God's ever given you another chance, I want you to wave your hand like you're in a parade. If God has ever saw you doing some stuff that was wrong and didn't judge you right then, you didn't drop dead, you didn't roll over, God woke you up the next morning and lets you make it. I want you to stand to your feet. If you are in here and you've ever been criticized by religious people who told you you are never going make it you're up to no good but God looked beyond your faults and gave you another grace chance I need for you to shake somebody's hand and tell them I know what it's like to come up short I don't want to talk about your neighbor on Facebook I don't want to talk about your friends on Instagram I don't want to talk about who you know on TikTok who came up short I want to talk about you because if you look at their sin you'll talk about theirs but Jesus didn't come to just save theirs it came he came to save you from yours and at the end of the day all of us come up somebody shout short be seated how do we handle people who come up short y'all ready number one you realize that human effort cannot fix it listen to me There is nothing you can do to fix you. If you could fix you, we wouldn't need him. Watch this. God did not come in the flesh to make you a better you. That's ridiculous. He came to make you just like him. Come here, can we talk? Zacchaeus has a problem. Guess what it is? He's short. Wait, wait, wait. Guess what? He was born short. Wait, wait, wait. How long was he born short? He lived short. Guess what? When he met Jesus, guess what he was? And when Jesus left town, guess what he was? You know, this whole short thing is deep. Because he never gets tall. He stays There is something about God and short people. (laughs) You don't need to be a scientist for this. He has an affinity for those who come up. I look, uh, Angela, at the 13 woes of the Bible, people that Jesus don't like. And do you know what I discovered? Not one was against somebody who was short. Everywhere you find short people who admit it, he loves them. Wait, let me prove it. Woman caught in the act of adultery. They don't bring the guy, they only bring the lady. Okay, y'all too holy. See, adultery is a sin you gotta need help with. You can't do that by yourself. They only bring one half of the crime. Jesus says, go and don't keep living like you've been living. They say to Jesus, you mean to tell me you're not going to stone her? He says, let who him with who was not sin. You throw the first rock. And the Bible says they left from the oldest to the youngest. Everywhere you find someone who has come up short in this book, you find them met with grace and mercy. Wait. God is a God of, wait, hold on for you clap. God is a God of wrath and punishment. But for his own children, ladies and gentlemen, there's difference between wrath and punishment. There is discipline. Touch your neighbor and say, God knows how to discipline me. But he never changes his mind. He never gives up and he never walks away. Do you understand that? Why? Because he understands that you're what? Everybody say short. Uh, I want to suggest to you that the problem here is what I call the horror of uh, comparative analysis. Let me tell you what we do. Here's what we do. We look at other people's shortness and compare it to our shortness. So we say stuff like, I am short, but at least I'm not like that. (laughs) I do drink a little wine, but I don't drink beer. Okay. I 
smoke a cigar, but I don't do weed. I'll do a parlay sheet, but I don't go to the casino. Okay, wait. I do the parlay sheet and the casino, but I get my tithe when I'm through. We decorate it so that it makes us comfortable. When, listen to me, listen to me, you ready? All have sinned. See how uncomfortable this is? It's uncomfortable. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay, read translation. All y'all are short. Do you hear me? Why well, preach this today? Watch this. Here, here it is, Drake. Because Easter coming. And there's two groups of short people. Those in here and those out there. And the problem with those in here is we've forgotten how short we are. You learned a few Bible verses. Now you got you a few little church clothes, you know. You got you a few church slang words. I'm blessed and favored of the Lord, you know. And now you can't identify with people who are just like you used to be. And I know they're going to come in short next Sunday. The dress going to be short. The skirt going to be short. The stuff going to be short. And I don't need you looking down your nose because you didn't forgot what you become. I need for you to realize you ain't always been like you are. You came to Jesus just like you were. And God didn't make you tall. He gave you grace so that you can be all right while you should. Short. I need for short people in here with a testimony of what God is like to high five your neighbor and tell them if he loved me when I was short, he going to love them when they are short. Let me go to second. So first of all, everybody say this. The human effort does not fix it. Can I throw this in? I'm just teaching today. Can I throw something in? We try to fix our shortness by becoming tall. See, here's what Zacchaeus does. He climbs up a tree so that he can make himself taller than what he really was. The problem with this whole idea, Jacqueline, is that anytime you make yourself so tall, you got to look down on Jesus. He reminds you to come down. No matter how tall you think you are, when it comes to God and his righteousness, you are short. Do you hear me? That's why every time you hear the word grace, y'all ought to shout. Let's practice. Grace. Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me do it one more time for those who didn't say nothing to me. What did he say? I said grace. Hold on, one more time. That sounds a little bit better. I'm gonna talk, wait, I want to talk to some people who still make some bad mistakes, made some bad choices, didn't do the right thing, slept in the wrong place, told God you wasn't going to do it no more, did it three more times. I want to just say it just for y'all. Y'all ready? Grace. And for those who call it cheap grace, here's what I got to say to you. It's only cheap because you ain't have to pay for it. Number two, let me hurry up. I got 10 minutes left. Human effort does not fix it. Humility is the only way to address it. Everybody say humility. humility. Say it again. Say humility. humility. For them to run out of ice after they put all of those children in line was humiliating. What you going to tell children from the hood? These ain't no... Let me talk to y'all. So y'all ain't listening to the story. They, from, they at Central Park. Imagination Station. This ain't over at Rogers Park. This Central Park. You don't walk out there with them children talking about I'm out of ice and they best friend talking about mine banana. You a lie. Yeah. It was humiliating. Do you understand that? You know, have you ever had to face your own shortness? It's humiliating, isn't it? It's humiliating when you worry when you know better and you ought to trust God. 
It's humiliating when you ought to pray and you don't pray and what you pray for ain't even what you ought to be asking God for. It's humiliating when you are so worried about what they think about you, you can't, worry, you can't be controlled by what God has to say for you. It's humiliating when you have pointed fingers at certain sins the whole time. Look at that. Oh my. And then commit the same sin you said you would never commit. It's humiliating when you have learned to be an upper crust type person only to realize you got your own issues that confront you every day. It is humiliating to sit on a pew in church and not trust God with all the big stuff when God takes care of the big stuff and the little stuff for you. It's is there anybody in here, can we just be transparent right quick, who has ever can, had to confront your own shortness and when you had to confront it, went to God and said, God, please help me because I need you like right now. I need some people who've ever confronted you. We're always confronting other people. But I say to you, listen to me, I say to you that the church of the living God would be better internally if we would borrow the grieving from Africa. Alcoholics Anonymous. You sit in the AA circle, Eb. Here is how it goes. They say, hi, I'm Joe. I'm a no good alcoholic. And they all say, hey, Joe. Why? Because we all got our shortness. Another time, but hi, I'm Gregory. I'm a no good weed head. Hey, Greg. You know, at church, we learn how to fake it. We all prim and proper, all looking sanctimonious and pious. And if you turn on the wrong music right now, they be like, hey, that's my... And all of a sudden, you become some one different and I say to you we have to get to a place where you say you got the things that make you short I need about 25 people that I can borrow who can I borrow tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say I'm short and you are too you you don't have to sit here and act like you tall you just as short as the rest of us you just as short as Zacchaeus is and the truth of the matter is you were short yesterday you short today and chances are you're going to be short tomorrow. Jesus looks up at Zacchaeus because you don't ever look down on God. Where can you go to look down on God? So he says, Zacchaeus, come down and hurry up because I'm headed to your house. Please notice, ladies and gentlemen. That he calls him to come down. Everybody say humility. You know, Angela, I did this study on humiliate and humility. Humiliate, humility. Humiliate, humility. Can you hear it? Humiliate, humility. They from the same word, humilias. You know what it means? To bring low. See, if you think too much of you, <laughs> God, I'm teaching so good. You'll never think enough of God. It's what you call legalism. It's where you think so much of you, you think very little of God. And when you think very little of God, you tend to put yourself too high on the ladder. And God has to tell you, bring it down a notch. How tall is too tall? How, watch this. How, how, how high is too high? Ask Moses. Moses gets on Mount Horeb. He sees a bush burning and unconsumed. The Bible says that this bush took on these metamorphic attributes of a butterfly uh, and, 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 and of tonsils and teeth and says to him, Moses, Moses, take off your shoes for the ground you're on is holy ground. His sandal is only a half inch high. Everybody say half inch. But that's too high if you come into God. God says, come to me with all of humility. I got good news and bad news. You can humble yourself voluntarily or God will do it mandatory. You can humble yourself without God's assistance or you can wait until God assists you. You can humble yourself and just say, okay, God, I admit it. I can't make it without. I think we ought to practice right quick. Everybody in here says, I know I can't make it without God. I am, I'm not going to be able to handle this without God. Lord, I need you in every part of my life. In fact, to be truthful, I need you in my mind, my heart, my soul, my family, my prayer life. I need you to walk with me and talk with me. I 
need you to lead me and guide me because I've come too far to go backwards. I ain't going back. I'm going forward. And every now and then the old me gets a hold of me and wants to take me to what I used to be when I ain't got to be with what I'm going to be just yet. So I want you to keep on molding me and shaping me and guiding me and yielding me. I want you to keep on making me so much like you that when I look in the mirror, I have to say, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Martin Luther, the great church reformationist, once said that in order for you to be a Christian, you had to admit that the I-A-N at the end of Christian meant I am nothing. I know that upsets y'all. You, you, you got a couple of nickels now? A degree or two on the wall. You're proud of your name that you've earned. You don't some of the sins you used to commit, you don't commit those. The nightclubs you used to go to, you don't go anymore. And it's because they're all closed down. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> you don't wear the same clothes you used to wear because it don't fit. We'll discuss that later. But hear me the truth. To be a real Christian says in the eyes of God, without you, oh God, I am nothing. It is where God says, if you humble yourself, watch this, I will exalt you. Notice what he does. When Zacchaeus comes down, Jesus came near. He said, I'm, wait, I ain't going to just come near. I'm coming to your house. Let me, see the, let me see the hands over says, God, I really would like for you to make a house call today if you don't mind. Can I tell you how you get him to do it? Come down. He gets to the house of Zacchaeus who is a hoodlum. He's of the worst sort because he works for the government of the oppressive Roman regime. And Jesus would dare say, when you humble yourself, I'm coming to kick it with you. There is a radical acceptance I don't want you to miss. Because certain people we reject. And those that we reject, God accepts. Some of us ain't going to like heaven. Now, trust me, listen to me, this is a good announcement. Some of y'all ain't going to like heaven. Because there's going to be some people in heaven you did not expect to see. Because everybody with a big Bible talking in tongues, slapping all, they ain't going to make it. Because they're so caught up with their righteousness, they don't know what it's like to accept his. I need 50 people in here who can say, thank God I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I am not all that I ought to be just yet, so God keep working on me. Do you hear me? I'm through. I, I got 49 seconds left. I'm done. Human effort does not fix it. Humanity. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Humility is the only way to address it. Last one. Humanity must have him to fix it. Do you understand that? Without Jesus, we're lost. Without him, we don't have a way. Notice Jesus accepts Zacchaeus, but Zacchaeus has an action he takes. It's repentance so beautifully. Here's what he does. He says, I know I ain't no good. See how quiet it is? Let's just practice right quick. Just say this. I know I'm not no good. Just say it. Say it. Say it. Just say it. You're in church. Just say, I know I ain't no good. In fact, tell your neighbor, if you knew everything about me, tell him, if you knew everything, you probably wouldn't sit by me no more. Look at him slide. No, we're talking about slide. Sit down. You sit by me. You're this state. Listen to me. I'm through. I'm done today. Zacchaeus says, I know I'm not no good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this money I done took from these people 
times four and give it back. Pastor Showers, here is the irony of this. It's not like he stopped doing what he was doing. He just gave some of it back. I know some of y'all going to have a problem with this, but watch this. Zacchaeus does not exhibit perfection in any way. There is nothing about this dude that makes me say, ah, he finally arrived. He does not. But he has enough in him to say, I know I'm wrong, so let me reverse what I can. Can I just ask you, have you reached a point where you say, God, I know I'm wrong. Help me, please. Hold on, I think we ought to take some moments. Just lift your hands and say, God, I know I'm wrong. I'm sorry, but help me, please. Jesus then makes this announcement today. Salvation is here. Not because you talked in tongues, not because you got it all right, but because you had enough nerve to admit that I'm wrong and I'm willing to reverse what I can to get it right. Jesus says, when you realize who you are and what I am, then I will save you from what's ahead of you because I'm going to pay the price for you that you cannot pay no matter how hard you try to pay it. I'm through. Let me just tell y'all that. So I'm standing in the shade watching this catastrophe happen. Happen. She didn't wait it too late. Ain't no ice, only syrup left. A little cute girl with some red, black, and white Air Force Ones got out of line with her attitude. She just walked off. I said, where's she going? She went to this little place, got in her backpack, honey, went down in the backpack, pulled out an iPhone. Looked like the iPhone plus. She went to texting and calling. She put her little hand on her hip, and then she just sat there in the the shade for a while. Up comes a Mercedes Benz black S500. Dude gets out and he calls her by her name. She gets happy and calls her girlfriends over and she said, y'all stand over here. Forget them in that line. The dude pops open the trunk ladies and gentlemen. It's about 30 bags of ice just laying there. He asks her who you want to have a snow call? I'm like, what is going on in here? Who is he? So after after they all eat, you know, I'm like a roving reporter from CNN. I said, come here, what's your name? Keisha. I said, Keisha, who was that that just left? That was my big brother. He driving my daddy's car. When I when we ran out of ice, I called my daddy and he sent my brother to come help me. I said, oh my God, that's what happens with us. When you run short, you call the father and he sends the son. He sent the son with enough ice for you to get a snow call, for me to get a snow call. I need for somebody in here who has ever realized that when you call on the father he has the power to send the son to your rescue. Ladies and gentlemen, they didn't just have enough ice for her and her friends. All the rest of the people in line got a snow cone. Elbow your neighbor and say, I got one too. They saw me in the heat. They said, Rev you want one? I said, hook her brother up. Why? Because the same grace that gave it to them gives it to everybody. I need for somebody in here who will say with me amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost but now I'm found. Twas blind but now I see. Give the Lord a hand. I'm finished. That's enough for the day. That's enough for the day. Standing to your feet. Let me see the hands of those who have one person in your family who really needs God. Wait. One friend who is lost and you know it. Let me see your hands. Let me see the hands of those who have at least one person you know who talks bad about the church. That's why I don't go. Y'all crazy in that with that eight off every Sunday. Let me see your hands. I want to have prayer for those people. The only difference between us and them is we're short and we know it. They're short and haven't confronted it. Every head bowed. Put the QR code up. God, if there's someone here today who has never come to know you, 
May I beg you for their soul. May I literally beg you to give them another chance. Can I please ask you, don't let them leave the same way they were when they came. But that you would let them be able to say, I'm short and I know it. Lord, you didn't save us by climbing onto a tree. You saved us by dying on one. And today, Lord, we've come because we can't do it without you. Lord, not only do I lift those present who need you, but I lift those who are in our families. Sons, daughters, cousins, nieces, nephews, friends. Lord, even some of our enemies. Would you please, God, please let them realize that they were born short, but they're going to live short, that they will die short. The only hope is to meet Jesus. Give him everything that makes you short so he can show you just how tall he can really be. But he will save us from us without any of our help that would cause us to live for him for the rest of our lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I want you to give the Lord a hand clap like everybody you know that short will come to know. Wait, how would you respond if everybody you know would come to the Lord because they found out the same thing you found out? Give the Lord a hand clap. See that QR code? Nearly 140 people have united with us this quarter from January to March. Y'all help me celebrate every soul that's come. And I believe there are more here today. See that code? Man, if you're making a decision, do what Zacchaeus did. Just admit I'm short. Scan that. And I'm telling you, a new life awaits you. One of doors that open, ways that are made, decisions that's going to bless you, and a life that says, even though I may struggle, from my, from my struggle comes my strength. Scan that, man, if you want a better life, if I want a better way of looking at life. Scan that. And hey, Anna, y'all, give all of our new members who are making this decision a hand clap right where you are. Okay, you can be seated. Let's get ready to give as the Lord has prospered us. Make ready to do that. And then we'll receive our morning announcements. Let's do that. Good morning, church family. Welcome to Ambassador TV. I'm your host, Brooklyn Williams. And I'm your co-host, Landon Richard. The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. But on a day like today, we can add a little bit more to that one command. Friends, today is Palm Sunday. For those of you who don't know what that means, it means Jesus is headed to the cross to die for the sins of the world. Wait, let me be a little bit more specific. To die for my sins and for yours. If there was ever a Sunday that you would let your gratitude be heard, seen, felt, and known, it's on a day like today. This is the day that the law has made. Let us rejoice because it's Palm Sunday. Can I get an amen? Join us this Thursday for Monday Thursday as we celebrate the new commandment that Jesus gave us to love one another before he displayed it on the cross. Don't miss our seven last sayings Thursday at 6 o'clock p.m. Our special speakers for the evening will be Bishop David Toops, Archdiocese of Beaumont, Pastor Edison Colbert, Paradise Baptist Church, Pastor Herb Fontenet, Strong Tower Church, Dr. Chris Moody, First Baptist Church, Apostle Janice Milo, Empowerment Church, Pastor Kaylin Gardner, First 6th Street Baptist Church, and Pastor Kaven Jones, Ebenezer Baptist Church. <clears throat> Did you miss your chance to take a picture with the Easter Bunny in the mall this year? Well, don't worry about it because he's hopping to you. Bunny hop with it. Hey, come on, <laughs> over in church. Uh, don't miss your chance to take your photos with Peter the Rabbit next Sunday in the foyer between services. Everyone will receive their professional photos, so get ready because he's coming. What's up with the voice change? What do you mean? 
Resurrection Sunday service times will remain the same, 8 o'clock a.m. and 10 o'clock a.m. Our celebration colors for that day will be purple and white, representing his royalty and his eternal reign. During the month of April, our Chief of Ministries, Dr. Karen Davis, her five coordinators, and 43 ministry leaders will be taking over the foyer with a ministry fair. If you're sitting and not serving in any capacity here at Antioch, this month-long initiative was designed with you in mind. So, be on the lookout for it. Today we would like to introduce a new Membership Has Its Privileges initiative. We are celebrating birthdays. If you've had a birthday during the month of January, February, or March, there is a special gift in the foyer for you. If you are part of our membership database, you receive specific instructions on what to do. If you did not receive an email and you recently celebrated your birthday, it's okay. There is something in the foyer for you too. This isn't just for those who are celebrating birthdays now. We will do special things all year long, so make sure you're connected. Join our contact list by visiting our website. Remember, membership has its privileges. Antioch is a church with a vision, and every member should know it and live it. One of the ways that we execute and bring our vision statement to life is through ministry movement and involvement. Let's take a look at our ministry spotlight this week. Joining the voices of Antioch Choir means you are singing with a group that shares a common desire to praise God with the gifts He has blessed us with. From the seasoned singers with decades of experience to new members discovering their voices, each person brings a unique perspective and passion to the mix. Together, we raise our voices in joyful worship, celebrating the beauty of creation and the grace of God. In this diverse community, united by our love for God and music, every rehearsal and performance becomes a moment of connection and inspiration. We would love for you to join our choir. Every week while reciting the vision statement, we stand in agreement by saying, we meet the needs of the total person. In the near future, we are looking to implement two new ministry constructs, a Spanish-speaking church and a sign language ministry. If you are fluently bilingual, hola, como estas? Me llamo es Landon. Uh, Brooklyn it. es Don't worry. muy or mean. Uh, <laughs> or interested in helping us develop a sign language ministry, please stop by the information station in the foyer. Don't worry about what? I think this is love. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now, you will be corrected. Now for a few quick notes. Adult Sunday School for both men and women is held every Sunday at 10 a.m. in the choir room led by Deacon Marvin Grossford. Married couples will meet today at 9.30 a.m. in Hall A. Flow Fitness with Lady Dory will meet at 6 p.m. in the Yak. Staff Prayer is Tuesday at 10 a.m. in the Conference Room. Hymn Choir Rehearsal is Tuesday at 6 p.m. in the Cathedral. Young Adult Choir Rehearsal is at 7.30 p.m. in the Cathedral. The War Room Prayer Call is every Wednesday at 7 a.m. on YouTube. Noonday Bible Study is every Wednesday at 12 p.m. in the Chapel. Fine Arts will have rehearsal Wednesday at 6 p.m. in the Cathedral. Antioch Recovering Ministry will meet Wednesday at 6 p.m. in Hall B. Graduation Ministry will have an essay writing contest at 6.30 p.m. in Hall A. G412 Bible Study is every Thursday at 6 p.m. in the Yak. Corporate Prayer is every Thursday at 5.30 p.m. and Bible Study is immediately following at 6 p.m. in the Cathedral. Young Adult Choir Rehearsal is Thursday at 7 p.m. in the Cathedral. Relentless LU Crew will have Bible study Thursday at 7.30 p.m. in the Price Auditorium at Lamar University. A well-informed church is always a happy church. Don't let the information that's designed for you be something that you've missed. Simply visit our website at antiochbmt.org, click Information Station, and choose Ambassador TV for details, dates, and a digital recap of today's announcements. Or you can check out our weekly newsletter. Before we close out today's announcements, there are three important things that we want to remind you of. Number one, check your surrounding areas for all of your personal belongings. Number two, please continue to write legibly and fill out your offering envelopes completely every time you sow a seed into the fertile grounds of God's kingdom here at Antioch. And number three, please be aware of the parking lot attendants while in transit as their job is to promote and procure safety methods and measures on your behalf. Again, thank you so much for joining us today and be encouraged in every moment that this week brings, knowing that our God reigns. May your struggles keep you near the cross. May your troubles show that you need God. May your battles end the way they should. May your whole life prove that God is good. Pastor Adolph, thank you so much for teaching us and leading us. We are back in your hands. Will you help me celebrate them? They do that so well every Sunday. I just love it. So pause, y'all. Listen, if you, so I have learned that the small things make the big things work well. And one of the things we're going to be doing here at our church is celebrating the birthdays of people who've been born because if God lets you live not just another day, but another year, your church ought to be able to say at least we pause to thank God for that day. 
So we're starting today, and we're going to go back to January. If you had a birthday in January, February, or March, y'all stand right quick wherever you are. January, February, March, babies. Y'all ain't clapping. Y'all help me salute every one of those bad boys. Now watch this. Here's what's going to happen. Today, after church, there is a special surprise for you in the foyer. Make sure you stop by and receive it. Amen. You may be seated. If you take glucose medicine, go on, pop you a pill now. Amen. Amen. Lift your gifts, man. Lift your gifts. Father, thank you for gift and give, receive and so up. Thank you for allowing us to give, knowing that we gain it back. We're grateful that no one is pressing us, stressing us, or trying to make us give. We're giving because you've been so good and gracious, we can't help but want to. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you for bills paid, ways made, and needs met. In Jesus' name, amen. Give us some giving music, man, and let's go ahead and give, and we'll receive the benediction. Standing to your feet. We sing this short song at the conclusion of giving because it honors the God who gave us the gifts. And we lift our hands cup like this and we just sing it. The words on the screen, share it with us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly halls. Praise Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Remain standing for the benediction. Give the best ushers in the whole wide world a big hand clap. Yo, we had one of our own run for state rep, and I just think he ran such a great race of integrity. Y'all give Brother Luther a big hand clap, man, for his race. We love you. We're supporting you, and we're always praying for you. So today at 4 o'clock, I'm in Houston at the Lily Grove Church. We have a bus that leaves at 1.30. If you're going, come on, don't be late. If you're not, certainly say a prayer for me as we go to share with our, my friend, Dr. Terry Anderson, for their 68th church anniversary. When you walk through a storm, hold your heads up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, there is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though sometimes your dreams may be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, walk on, no matter what life throws your direction, because our God will see you through. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, and may he make his face to perpetually shine upon you and give you peace, is my sincere plea, prayer, and petition. In the name of Jesus, we ask these blessings, and all of the people of God who love the Lord sing this final word together. Ah. Amen. Go in peace. You are excused.